Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So in this week's video I'm going to be revisiting the 486 and those who watch the channel remember that a few weeks ago I built this uh, big box 486. It's a DX4100 and it has an Opti motherboard. Uh, and I also have a second 486 which is this one here and I used this one to benchmark all the video cards uh, in a recent video. Now the problem is this particular machine is having some problems. It's got a VIA chipset motherboard and uh, it's been getting worse and worse and it's just at the point now where it almost never boots up. Uh, and I discovered that if I stick uh, something under the front of the board and really bow it up uh, then it seems to work okay. And uh, of course there's nothing shorting underneath it, I've checked that. Uh, so it's probably uh, you know a dodgy solder joint or uh, broken trace or maybe even something wrong with the ZIF socket. Uh, now this board also has a broken uh, Visa local bus slot and I've wondered for a very long time what caused that and I finally found today that there is actually a broken trace which goes to that slot. Uh, it was hanging off the board uh, like a piece of wire actually and uh, yeah so this is definitely a very faulty board and needs to go. Uh, but in the meantime, I've also heard that the VIA chipset that's in these isn't really very good. And uh, so people have recommended that I might do better with an SIS or a UMC chipset. So I had a look online and unfortunately the UMC ones are really, really expensive, very hard to get at a reasonable price. Uh, but I did manage to find uh, a reasonably priced um, SIS chipset. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that board into the big box 486 which is my favorite machine and see whether I can get uh, a better performance than I had uh, with the Opti chipset that is in there or even the VIA chipset. And we have benchmarks for these. Uh, in particular I've heard that the SIS chipsets may actually be better at Quake uh, than the UMC chipsets. Uh, so I'm really interested to see whether this performs well. In particular, I would like to see if it beats the VIA chipset. Uh, so that's one of the things I'm going to be benchmarking today. And uh, there's some other things I've got planned as well, but I'll leave those for later in the video. And uh, let's see if we can get this thing to speed up. So in case you're interested, this is the SIS-85C471 chipset and uh, this is 256 kilobytes of cache. Uh, there are nine chips here including the tag and these are IS-61C256AH-20N chips uh, and eight of those would make 256 kilobytes. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that the jumpers here appear to be set for one megabyte. Uh, this jumper, JP14, looks like it should be in the other setting uh, for 256 kilobytes, so I'll have to investigate that. So I've run some benchmarks after switching over the board, and I'm getting 47.6 frames per second in 3D Bench, which is well below uh, what we were getting before with the uh, VIA board. Uh, that was around 60 frames a second. Uh, so I have no idea why this board is slower. At first I thought it was so much slower that maybe Turbo was switched off, but I checked that, it's certainly not. Um, I also thought perhaps the cache chips in this might be faulty, so I switched those out for the cache chips in the VIA board, which just happened to be compatible. And uh, this made absolutely no difference at all. And the rather interesting thing is that when I run the cache check program, it just tells me that this machine only has one cache, namely the L1 cache in the processor. Uh, so I'll just run that and show you what happens. So this is the cache check program which comes with Phil's Computer Lab's benchmarking suite. And uh, if you have a look about halfway down the page, it says this machine seems to have one cache. Uh, cache is 8 kilobytes and it's at 370% of the speed of main memory. Uh, now this is certainly the internal CPU cache, uh, which is certainly enabled. But uh, if you have a look at the top of the screen where it goes through the block sizes, you can see that there is no speed up 
uh, when it gets below say 256 kilobytes which is what the size of this case should be uh, so it looks very much like uh, there is no external cache here and uh, that's very odd there are cache chips on board uh, I've even tried switching them out for equivalent chips from another board uh, that certainly works and uh, this makes no difference at all. I also changed that jumper on board that I mentioned earlier that had it set for one megabyte instead of 256k makes no difference whatsoever. I've been through the jumper settings for the board very very carefully and uh, one problem here is that this is version 2 of the CH471A motherboard and there are only motherboard manuals for version 1 and version 3 online. Version 2 is just subtly different. Um, it seems like all of the jumpers are the same uh, in terms of numbering, so I think it's set correctly, but uh, I actually can't find anybody who claims to have this board. Uh, it seems like uh, this was a pretty rare board, uh, and probably they found that there were problems with it and had to bring out version 3 real quick. Uh, in fact, the only references I can find to this board online are, you know, people selling them. Um, in fact, most of the ads actually link to the, uh, the same board uh, online. So I think there's something wrong with this board. Um, I've tried switching the CPU uh, to see if that's relevant. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect things. And I've tried changing some of the jumper settings that uh, shouldn't really matter and uh, just to see whether any of them trigger something, but they don't. I've also been through the BIOS very carefully and looked for any options that might be uh, responsible for the slowdown here, but uh, I'm not finding anything. Uh, so I'm running out of ideas with this board. I think I just have to say you, I certainly can't recommend this board at all. Uh, it's very slow. Uh, it doesn't seem to work with the cache at all. And uh, yeah, I think it's basically faulty. So after fiddling a lot with this motherboard, I haven't made any more progress in speeding it up. And I began to think that perhaps the CPU is not properly supported. Uh, so as you know, I don't have the exact motherboard manual for this version 2 of the board. And I noticed that the AM486DX4 is not supported explicitly in the version 1, and it is uh, supported explicitly in the version 3. So I don't know for sure it's supported on the version 2, and even if it is, I don't know exactly what the jumper settings should be. And unfortunately there's so many jumper settings for the CPU that there's no way I could guess what they might be. Uh, so I'm going to have to put that aside for now. Instead, what I'm going to do is buy a DX4100, for, uh, an Intel one, uh, which this board certainly supports, and uh, give that a go and see if that's what the problem is. But of course, that'll take some time to arrive, so that's a project for another day. Uh, but for today, I have something else that's kind of interesting. Uh, I have here an 8-bit VGA graphics card. Uh, so normally when you see a VGA graphics card, it's either going to be Visa Local Bus or it's going to have the, you know, the extra 16-bit uh, ISA connector here. Uh, but this is a very, very old, uh, very rare card, and it's from about 1990 or so. And uh, so this is a Senglabs ET3000AX. And you remember in a recent video I benchmarked a whole bunch of video cards, uh, ISA, Visa Local Bus and PCI ones. And then in a later video I talked about what actually makes a video card fast. And one of the things that I mentioned is that in the early days VGA was 8-bit, uh, but this is very slow because it has to run at speeds that uh, won't uh, be a problem for the original PC because this is the PC uh, ISA connector. And so the bus really has to slow this down a lot. Uh, moreover, you're only getting 8 bits of data at a time instead of 16. And so there was a big advertising push when the 16-bit cards came out, and it was just about impossible to sell an 8-bit uh, VGA card after that point. Uh, so I'm really interested to see whether this is really as slow as reported. Um, and of course it's just a chance to try out a really ancient piece of hardware that's actually hard to get. If you look online for VGA video cards, you almost certainly won't find 8-bit ones. 
Uh, so this is really going to be a treat, I think, to try this out and see how it performs. So I've gone ahead and put the 8-bit VGA card into the benchmarking machine. So that's the one that has the faulty Visa Local bus slot and that hasn't been booting properly. And uh, as you can see, it's really glacially slow. You can actually watch this thing count down in real time. Uh, it's incredibly slow. And I don't imagine that games would have been very playable on an 8-bit VGA card. So we're getting 17.8 frames per second on the 16-bit uh, version of this card. And you can see that we're only getting 11.1 .1 frames per second on the 8-bit version. So it's actually a little bit faster than I thought it would be, but it's still very, very slow. Uh, given that you can get 60 frames a second on a good Visa Local Bus card, uh, we're talking now about... Uh, you know, five and a half times slower than a good uh, VLB card. Uh, so the other benchmark I can run here is the PC Player benchmark. And uh, this one's also incredibly slow. You can see it's only getting a few frames a second. And I think this is probably pretty re representative of what you would get in 320 by 200 games. Uh, so I wouldn't call this the most playable card uh, on the market. It's nice to have one of these cards simply because uh, you know it's a very very early version of VGA and if you want to write programs uh, for VGA you really don't want to be optimizing them for the fastest card out there. Uh, so anyway it looks like we get 5.8 frames per second there so that's uh, really incredibly slow. Anyway that's all I have for today. Um, obviously I have to wait until I get a uh, Intel DeX4100 before I can run the SIS motherboard again. Uh, I had planned to actually try some other things, for example changing the speed of the RAM in the motherboard to see how much difference that made, but I don't think it's actually worth it until we get that working properly, so we'll leave that for a later video. Uh, so if you're interested to see that when it comes along, uh, then don't forget to subscribe, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like below and we'll see you in a later video. Bye! So I just wanted to add a little bit of a postscript here. So I've gone ahead and put the case chips from the SIS motherboard uh, into the VIA motherboard, the benchmarking machine, and I'm just running case check here, and you can actually see the difference in this thing. Uh, it shows that it has an L1 cache of 8 kilobytes and an L2 cache of 256 kilobytes. So this is not what we were getting with the SIS board. And if you look at the top of the screen, uh, when it gives the block sizes, you can see that from 256 to 512 kilobytes, there's a really massive jump in the time. And this is really where things start to fall out of cache. Uh, so that shows that the chips that are in that board are actually working just fine. Uh, and that's not the problem, certainly. There's something with the board itself. And, uh, you know, even the BIOS has an option for enable external cache, but uh, this just doesn't make much of a difference. It's certainly less than 10% difference anyway when that's enabled. So the other thing I wanted to show is this uh, 3D bench running with the VIA chipset motherboard with external cache switched off. Uh, so this should be comparable to the SAS board with the non-working cache. And you can see that uh, we get exactly 47.6 frames per second again, so identical to what you get with the SIS board. Uh, so this certainly shows that the cache is not working in that board at all, even though the chips seem fine. Uh, if anyone has any ideas what it could be, uh, you know, drop a comment below and I'll look into it. Uh, but otherwise, I guess we have to wait until I get a genuine Intel uh, DX4100 to try it out in a future video. Bye!